Hello, this is The Pride and today, together with our friends, we will review the best of the past year, wish each other new successes, victories, and reasons for pride as well as meet with a wonderful person who presented us and the world with an iconic film and not only for Kazakhstan. Meet our new friend Rashid Musayevich Nugmanov. We met with Nugmanov at the time of the Golden Autumn at a cafe table in the center of the city in a completely Almata style. The conversation turned out to be warm and sincere, like all that fine day and walking along the Tulibayev Alley now in the middle of the winter. I keep thinking about that day, the meeting, and that conversation. In general, this area is originally yours, right? Yes, that's right. I was born on Kurmangazi in Krasin. But this is what Balikanova is called now. After we moved here, when I was six years old, here I grew up. Tulebaika, this is my homeland. On these benches passed my youth, first love, maturity, fights, there were a lot of things, and of course, the music. It was the place for the monument and for shooting, not a random place. Of course, it was not without reason that I chose this place. We shot here, he stood a little further, about here. Three, four steps to the side. There were firs, probably they were cut down. That one might have been withered. Yes, there were more firs. Now, there are very few of them. Victor was filmed from where the camera stands now, in this direction. The second camera, which was shooting from his side, so to speak, with his eyes, it was from the other side. But they shot it in such a way that it seemed that it was a long. The killer, well, I don't mean that Victor died, but the killer intended to inflict a mortal blow on him. It was like an attempted murder, and according to the script, the main character was also supposed to die. And I refused to do it, and so Victor and I agreed that despite the fact that we won't be able to change the script so that there wouldn't be an attack with a knife, we agreed that he would get back off his knees and go on, light another cigarette so that there's nothing that could stop him. Such a life-affirming finale? Of course, yes. The main character is an unkillable person. But in the end, did Victor turn out to be like that? Well, yes, imagine if he fell to his knees and died. It would be complete nonsense, at least as it seemed to us. This would not correspond to all with the main character and the idea of the film as a whole. How many years have passed since filming? 32, because we shot it in 1987. Wait, we shot this scene in January 1988. The shooting period was over in December 1987. And for the last scene I needed snow, such Almata-like heavy snow. And there wasn't any snow. Just a little, when they saw a little snow, the crew immediately ran to me. Rashid Musayevich, let's go shoot. No, I said no, we wait. Victor stayed on New Year. We celebrated New Year here. As it seemed to me, we, he stayed here with pleasure. And after that, I don't remember the exact date, but it finally snowed around January the 8th or 10th. We immediately resumed shooting. After all, everyone was in this city. The film crew has arrived. And what is the crew? A few people. So we quickly filmed the necessary scenes. Yes, this is not new, and there's some commonplace in it, but how to speak with Nugmanov and avoid the talk about the needle? Is this possible? Not for me, for sure. 
This is the youngest fan of Victor Tsoi. Does he like to listen? Yes, he listens to the Kino. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. This is Uncle Rashid. This is Saeed. I have a nephew. His name is Saeed too. Let me take a picture. Thank you very much. I was very glad to see you. More than 30 years have passed since the release of The Needle. Rashid Musavich is recognized on the streets to this day, and his popularity is not affected by the fact that, it would seem, the director always remains behind the scenes. That is, remains a less public figure than the actors. But to call Nugmanov only a director would be fundamentally wrong. This is a man of many talents, and he managed to be realized in many fields. Rashid Musayevich Nugmanov was born on March 19, 1954 in Almaty, Soviet and Kazakhstan film director, screenwriter, producer, artist, architect, public figure. In 1977, he graduated from the Kazakh Polytechnic Institute with a degree in architecture. In 1984, he entered the directing department of FGIC in the studio of Sergei Solovyov. In 1989, he was elected first secretary of the Union of Cinematographers of Kazakhstan. Since 1992, he lives in France, in the city of Tours. Since 1998, he engaged in political activities. In 2007, in Kazan, he received a certificate of noble dignity, since on the maternal side, he belongs to the family of Princess Mamleyev. In 2010, he released a new expanded version of the Needle, Needle Remix. In 2016, he was elected president of the National Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences of Kazakhstan. He is the author of the script and regulations for the presentation of the National Cinematography Award, Tulpar. From 2015 to 2017, he served as director general of the Eurasia International Film Festival. Looking ahead, I note that the entire voluminous and insanely interesting conversation with such a master as Nugmanov cannot be fit into one episode. However, just like my new friend, I will not disclose all plans for the future. But in general, I have several projects simultaneously, as always, they are movies, and I decided to return to the cinema. I don't really like to disclose plans until I'm in production. Not that I'm not a superstitious person at all, but I don't like to announce something that is not in stage of active production, you know. It is somehow uncomfortable. So, you don't ask the artist when you see a blank canvas if he decided what he's going to paint on it, or does he know what it will look like? And of course, you don't ask him about the colors, nuances, the plot, and so on. He will never tell you. He will be uncomfortable. Because when you work on a project, it doesn't matter is it a movie or a poem or a picture or an architectural project, whatever. When you find some kind of algorithm for a future work, this work itself begins to dictate to you what it needs to be. It is mutating because you are building the world in reality. And the world must always exist according to one law or another. And as soon as it begins to come to life, to exist according to its own laws, you cannot even intervene. And you yourself open it. For me, every project, no matter what I do, is still a mystery. It is a riddle to be solved. And the process works. The process of solving this riddle, creative art, is a mystery. So for you, it's always more a search than such hard work, according to some schedule or some plan. No, why? Schedules and plans also exist. It is impossible without them. If you work with a large team with a group of people who should receive a salary and each shooting day is worth serious money, you cannot afford to lie on the couch and smoke until it strikes you.
So this is. You can only afford it when you are preparing for the project. So I'm in the situation now. I mean, I write scripts. I have developed them quite well, so then revise them, go deep. I understand what errors they have, what contradicts the world that I'm trying to build in them. That's where you can take your time. But as soon as you start everything, of course, you can't afford it there. But on the other hand, even at the gig site, I developed my own style of work when a work is also born on the site. That is, I am not a supporter of those directors who planned everything, painted it literally frame by frame, and then they simply shoot according to the previously developed plan. Maybe someone is comfortable with such an attitude, and from the point of view of economics and production, this is probably good, but I understand as a director that something is also happening on the set. So you mean that there should be some room for maneuver? Exactly, yes. Some space, and therefore my style is more improvisational, although this improvisation is not everything what came to mind. This is improvisation within the framework of given task that we must perform today, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, and so on. And for me it is very important and very valuable to catch such moments when the actor is not prepared. Therefore, when we memorize the role and mechanically perform it, perhaps with great skill, but still mechanically, you will not hide it. The largest actors, of course, can deceive the viewer that this is happening here and now because they are masters. But not every actor is a great master. But at the same time, many people can live and exist right now in front of the camera if you build the shooting process correctly. And how did the actors respond about your method of work? Are they comfortable with this? Well, of course it's comfortable. Well, Victor Tsoi, for example, he was very comfortable working like that. But he was not a professional actor, was he? He was not professional. Well, another example, Alexander Bashir. He's generally comfortable with working in such an improvisational environment. And he played in my very first study and in subsequent studies in Vkik. And we ourselves came up with a style of work, improvisational style. This is a completely different system than the Stanislavski system. So, but it is no less viable. Look, Viktor Tsoi was not a professional actor, but in 1989, according to the annual poll of the magazine Soviet Screen, he was recognized as the best actor in the USSR. Much ahead of the one going that year, Alexander Abdulov, who took the second place. I remember the cover from those years. I really remember that cover of the Soviet screen, which, like many other posters, I glued to the wall in my room, and, and I remember all those first impressions of the needle. But life, including the life of the filmmaker, does not consist only of cinema. You mentioned that you decided to return to the cinema. And why, at one time, did you decide to leave the cinema? Yes, because I do not consider cinema the most important of the arts for me personally, because everything is interesting to me. I am an architect by first education, so... And of course I spent many years on a student bench, and then I worked as an architect, built houses in Almaty. Well, then I left, I was interested in history. I went to the Society for the Protection of Historical and Cultural Monuments of Kazakhstan. I traveled all over Kazakhstan. Before that, I was hiking. I went through the forests with my brother. I went through the taiga. So, there was no moment of disappointment? No, what disappointment? This is joy and thirst for life. So, life is much wider than a film set. And what is shooting for me? I shot, well, if you count, including short films, six films, or what? So, filming for me is still part of life. It's not some kind of profession or craft. And this is probably part of my soul. Just like Victor, for example, cinema wasn't some kind of work for him. He didn't do it just to receive a paycheck and then move on to another project. It's just like 
writing music and music wasn't just his job. It wasn't just for the money for him because it's not a salary, not a job for some kind of philharmonic society and so on. This is part of life, part of yourself, as is cinema. And in general, whatever I do in my life, this is part of me. If it doesn't feel like me, I will not stay there. I will leave immediately. Well, in any case, it's appropriate to say that all your experiments are vital, including trips to the taiga. Is it all the same as a result work for the cinema? Is it? Cinema is being made not only at the side, right? Is this some kind of experience? Probably only because I entered Vgik at some point, took it off and so on, but if I hadn't entered Vgik and I hadn't made films, still my life wouldn't have changed fundamentally at all. It's just that cinema is such a sphere, it's as if on the surface, you know, public attention, popularity and so on. This does not mean that this is the main thing in life. Maybe I did some things much cooler, which were seen, for example, by a small number of people. For example, and many will agree with me, our fellow students at Vgik, we did a lot of things on the side, generally wonderful people from other workshops came to watch our shows. So we showed a lot of unexpected things there, even for Vgik, including this improvisational system. This was not filmed, and since it is not filmed, it means that it does not exist in the mass consciousness. But it does exist. It does not cancel your life, life experience in those moments that you experience. Happiness, in the same way, it applies to a lot of things in the personal life of any person, even some intimate things, love and so on. They are not for the public. They are for you, and this does not diminish their values. Absolutely, whatsoever. So does the rest. I do not make any distinctions, and if this attracted the attention of the public, well, okay, so it is. That is live. Of course, the venue was chosen by chance. Rashid Musayevich himself lives literally in the neighborhood, and the very scene was shot right there precisely because it was just so convenient for the film crew. And in the end, we are standing at the legendary crossroads in the company of the main character who also became a legend. After so many years, when you remember all this, does it make you shiver? Well, 32 years, well, I can't say that I shiver, but there are many other memories in life, no less dear to me, right? Because I'm happy that it was in my life. But it's nice that it turned out to be necessary for people. It's also good, for example, I didn't erect this monument. Initiative group of people did. They gathered, made it, put it. But I gave my consent. Yes, of course, put it. If this helps someone in life, it brings some warmth in life, then it's great, so we didn't shoot it all for nothing. The question that was asked by the operator, how much from Tsoi himself in this character, Moro? Probably 99% of Tsoi. I mean, by nature, in essence, he does not play anyone. But of course, there is the artificiality of the plot itself. Of course, Tsoi did not save anyone from drug addiction. He was not born in Almaty and so on, but I do not consider this all serious. In general, it is difficult for me to determine the percentage, but of course, there are a lot of mine too. Because we came up with this character together, but in such a way that he does not contradict Victor himself so that there was no internal untruth. You see, it was a success. I can't tell you exact ratio, but there is definitely nothing extraneous in, in it. Something that entered his soul that Victor accepted internally. It is in Moro. 
So, in the end, we can say that Moro is Tsoi. Although, you can continue to make films about the adventures of Moro, which can be played by other actors, actually, because Moro is a character who came from my first scenario along Kalinin Street, which we called Ford, and the script was called King of Ford. And there, I agreed that Victor would be filming when we still did not know anything about the needle. That we would have such an opportunity, we were preparing to shoot the King of Ford and Moro's name, the nickname of the main character, it is real. There was a guy, I didn't meet him, a person, only according to the stories of my older brother and the other guys of the Ford. He became famous for having the first banjo here in Almaty, and he played the banjo. Fancy, huh? And all seemed to respect him, but not only because he was playing the banjo, but also because he could punch someone in the face, and generally, the king of Ford could not be without honor. And the honor constantly had to be confirmed by something. So, and this is all influenced, our character and thank God Victor was engaged in martial arts and knew how to stand up for himself. And all this intertwined, merged. Moreover, he was a musician, as you know, but he didn't play banjo even better. So Victor turned out to be such a person that fully corresponded to his character. Who would have been the king here in Almaty if Victor was born in the 60s, he would have been king of Ford, stylish and strong. Hello, may I take a picture with you? Well, come on, yes. I will always be grateful to Rashid Nugmanov for that warm evening, an interesting conversation, as well as an occasion to be proud that I live in the same city as the creator of my favorite youth film and its characters. Well, the pride goes on, and to succumb together to the vibes and mood of the holiday and the atmosphere of the New Year's wishes and hopes for the best. Last season, several episodes were dedicated to the stars of the Astana Opera Theater. Each meeting is like a treasure, and today our friends wish you a happy new year. Dear Kazakhstanis, I sincerely congratulate you on the most wonderful holiday. Happy New Year! Of course, I want to wish you health, health to your loved ones, peace in your soul, peace around you and prosperity. May your best dreams and wishes come true. Let there be more colors of bright, positive emotions in life. And for this, I invite you to our theater. We are ready to give you joy and beauty. Come to us and we will travel into the world of beautiful art. Happy New Year! Marinsky Prima Altinai Asilmuradova was remembered to me by elegant manners, a subtle sense of humor and, of course, amazing observations from the world of ballet. The main conductor of the theater, Alan Buribayev, was no less a bright person. Despite the fact that our acquaintance turned out to be short, I do not lose hope for a continuation. Dear friends, Happy New Year! I want to wish you health, happiness, joy and good luck. Let only warmth and prosperity reign in every family. May all cherished wishes come true in the new year. Happy New Year! The fabulous atmosphere of the theater would not be so fabulous without the soloists, 
whom we always rush to see, leaving things behind and forgetting the fuss. Singer Medet Chotabayev is definitely one of such artists. Congratulations to all Kazakhstanis on a wonderful holiday. Happy New Year. I wish you all health, happiness, love, prosperity, inspiration, happiness in your families. Let the new 2020 year bring you love and good mood. May all your dreams come true in the new year. May your hearts be warmed by beautiful music. May everything be safe with you. Happy New Year! However, it is not always possible to meet with our patriots on our territory. Often you have to overcome a path of several thousand kilometers to hear, for example, the voice of Maria Mudrak. Dear Kazakhstanis, with all my heart, I want to congratulate you on the upcoming new 2020 year. I wish you well-being, a lot of happiness, joy and, of course, health to you and your loved ones. And I wish prosperity and peaceful sky to our dear Kazakhstan. Happy New Year, dear people of Kazakhstan. There were a lot of pleasant moments and bright meetings during the filming of the project. One of the warmest New Year's moments for me was our walk with the guys from the Jiggets. I'll always be glad to see you guys and I still remember the last meeting in detail so far. Dear friends, I would like to wish you all a happy new year. I wish you well-being, happiness, and that we leave this year and enter the new year in the same quantity and in the same quality. Friends, in the new year, with renewed vigor, with new happiness, with new health, be healthy. Happy new year. New year is a celebration of the faith of hope and love. Love, believe in magic, because it happens. Happy New Year, friends. Пока часы двенадцать бьют, пока часы двенадцать бьют, с Новым годом! We see off the year with the song. We meet a new one with the song. The songs are full of memories. Remember how with Orin Basar Abu we sang Julia in Queens. River smoke of bygone days, not me. White river smoke of bygone days. Obviously I, and therefore you too, happened to witness the birth of a new cool band because the soloists and musicians felt each other instantly. And this very team was announced in posters by December 29th. And today Queens is singing along to the favorite songs of Kazakhstan people. Yeah. I forgot, I forgot, yeah, yeah, sir. Happy New Year to Kazakh TV. Our dear friends, be happy.
Well, my dears, Happy New Year to you and may all your dreams come true, just as they come true for our friends, brave, bright, and ready to conquer the world.